And joining us now, Stuart Varney, host of Varney & Company at the Fox Business Network. And Stuart, you know, our guest uh, that we just mentioned, Vincent Orange, he's a council member here in D.C. He's a proponent of this uh, bill forcing Walmart and other big box stores to have to pay their employees what they're calling a living wage, much higher than any other store in town has to pay. And according to Vincent Orange, our guest uh, in the next hour, he says that right now D.C. doesn't need retailers. Retailers need D.C. <laughs> What do, what do you think of that economic principle, Stuart Varney? I, I really shouldn't laugh because it's not funny. This is organized labor's war on poor people. This is organized labor pursuing a jihad against a Walmart primarily and saying, you can't come in here, we don't want your jobs because they're not union jobs. Frankly, Larry, it reminds me of Margaret Thatcher. Huh? Margaret Thatcher said, you don't care if poor people get poorer so long as the rich get poorer, too. <laughs> Drag everybody down. That's what Councilman Orange is doing. He, by the way, appeared on my show last week when this decision was first handed down, and he said exactly the same thing that I think he's going to say to you today. We don't need these jobs. We don't want these jobs because they're not paying a proper living wage. Remarkable. Unbelievable. But you're right. It's really about the unions. It really is about the unions, yes. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there has been a letter written by other huge retailers to the yeah, mayor of, seven of them saying, hey, veto this thing. Target, Walgreens, Macy's, amongst others, veto this thing, please. I think that's what's going on now. Well, we'll, we'll uh, find out what's on Vincent Orange's uh, mind at 835. Okay, let me ask you about what happened at the White House yesterday. Jay Carney stands before the assembled press corps and makes the representation after a question is asked that there is no evidence to suggest that employers are cutting back on payrolls or employee hours as a result of Obamacare. Uh, do you believe he has that right? No, he's not got it right. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Carney, you got this one wrong. Number one, a variety of food, fast food chains have said we will be cutting hours to accommodate here comes Obamacare. Number two, the Chamber of Commerce released a survey of businesses, a lot of businesses, and found, I think it was 74%, I think that was the number, who were going to reduce hours, fire people to get them and move people from full-time to part-time. This is going to happen. There's no way around it. It is going to happen. It is happening already, for heaven's sake. And Mr. Carney is just spinning uh, the administration's point of view. They're desperate. I think Obamacare is falling to pieces, and it will truly fall to pieces when Democrats realize they've got to go into the election next yeah. year with Obamacare around their neck, and they're not going to like it. Do you think that it's, it's going to uh, be taken down? Because, you know, there are a lot of people have said, you know, as we get closer to this election and as people realize the impact, that the Democrats may run from this thing. Oh, I think they will. Yes, I think chaos is coming. I think it's obvious. Huge price increases are coming. I think that's obvious. And I don't think Democrats in Congress facing re-election next year will want anything to do with it. I think they will be the ones who kill it, or at least significantly delay it. I think that is going to happen. Uh, Stuart Varney is our guest, of course, host of Varney & Company. You're, you're based out of New York, regrettably. We'd love to have you down here, Stuart. But since you're stuck up there, uh, I'm interested in your take on, you know, talk about chaos is coming. Well, this Sunday in your uh, city of New York there, Al Sharpton is planning a whole bunch of protests. They want to shut down the city because of the Zimmerman uh, uh, case down in Florida. I, I know you, you know, everybody's been talking about this case. Everybody has an opinion on it. We've heard Stevie Wonder say he's going to boycott the state of Florida. Is there a, a growing movement? here that you can see that there is going to be economic pressure on places like Florida and possibly on businesses if they don't in some way respond to the Zimmerman verdict? I don't know how they could, but... Uh, I think there will be a growing movement. I don't think it'll work. Um, I just don't think that Florida will be punished economically for the verdict which took place within the state boundaries. I, I think it will grow. I think there will be an attempt at a boycott, an attempt to punish Florida economically. I don't think it will work. From my point of view, if I can give you my take on this, please. Thing, I, I am dismayed. Uh, I, I am truly dismayed that America in the year 2013 is actually racially moving further apart, and that the professional race baiters are actually enhancing that movement apart of our own people. 
I think that's a terrible thing. And I, I just, frankly, I hate to see it. And isn't this a great opportunity for Barack Obama to sort of bridge that divide? And, and what do you think? Has he, has he been uh, sort of uh, vocal enough in trying to help this conversation along? I, uh, from, what he, from what Attorney General Eric Holder has said, I don't think there's an attempt to bridge the gap. Sounds to me like the Attorney General, who is a good friend of the president, a personal friend, sounds to me like he is enhancing that divide. Calls to repeal or get rid of stand your ground is in the injection of racial politics into the judicial system, and I think that's wrong. All right, Stuart Varney. Hey, oh, by the way, back in your former uh, nation of England, every all eyes are on uh, the baby watch. Uh, do you have any predictions about the gender, the name, or could you not care less? Oh, no, I care, but not in the sense that I'm desperate to find out who is the next uh, heir or the, a, a future heir to the throne. I am fascinated by that degree of fascination yeah, right. with That's Americans right. show. Yeah, we, we love this stuff. Why do Americans like that, Stuart? Yeah, I, I, I can't explain it. All I, the blood that was spilt in the Revolutionary War to divest ourselves from the monarchy, and now we care about who the, uh, the heir to the throne will be in, you know, 70 I think, years. I think Americans care because his so-called leader, who is not elected, has nothing to do with politics at all. And oh, how different that is from every place else. <laughs> All right, thanks, Stuart. We got to leave it right here. Great thanks, Stuart. You. Appreciate it. Shall I